Good evening. I'm Donald Cobbs of 11th Hour Ministries. And tonight I thought it'd be fun to bring you four stories, four short stories, and each one has its own moral at the end. What impressed me to do this was the fact that each one of these stories affected me differently. Each one within its moral either caused me to think of how it fit me or as what most of us do, of how it would fit that other person. But I'll leave that for you to decide. So this evening, I'm merely asking that you either claim it for yourself or you give it away. Our first story for this evening is entitled Potatoes, Eggs, and Coffee Beans. Once upon a time, a daughter complained to her father that her life was miserable and that she didn't know how she was going to make it. She was tired of fighting and struggling all the time. It seemed just as one problem was solved, another one soon followed. Her father, a chef, took her to the kitchen. He filled three pots with water and placed them each on a high fire. Once the three pots began to boil, he placed potatoes in one pot, eggs in the second pot, and ground coffee beans in the third pot. He then let them sit and boil without saying a word to his daughter. The daughter moaned and impatiently waited, wondering what he was actually doing. After 20 minutes, he turned off the burners. He took the potatoes out of the pot and placed them in a bowl. He pulled the boiled eggs out and placed them in a bowl. He then ladled the coffee out and placed it in a cup. Turning to her, he asked his daughter, what do you see? Potatoes, eggs, and coffee, she hastily replied. Look closer, he said, and touch the potatoes. She did and noted that they were soft. He then asked her to take an egg and break it. After pulling off the shell, she observed the hard boiled egg. Finally, he asked her to sip the coffee. Its rich aroma brought a smile to her face. Father, what does this mean, she said. He then explained that the potatoes, the eggs, and coffee beans had each faced the same adversity with the boiling water. However, each one reacted differently. The potato went in strong and hard and unrelenting, but in the boiling water, it became soft and weak. But she was still kind of puzzled. And so he says the egg was fragile with the thin outer shell protecting its liquid interior until it was put in the boiling water. Then the inside of the egg became hard. But however, the ground coffee beans were unique. After they were exposed to the boiling water, they changed the water and created something new. So he asked his daughter, which are you? When adversity knocks on your door, how do you respond? Are you a potato, an egg, or a coffee bean? The moral of this story is life 
in life, things happen all around us. Things happen to us. But the only thing that truly, truly matters is what happens within us. So I ask, which one are you? In controversy, which one are you? Will you claim this story for yourself or will you give it away? Stay tuned for our next story. Bye. Thank you for joining me once again for the second story in our sequence of four. This one is entitled Shark Bait. During a research experiment, a marine biologist placed the shark into a large holding tank and then released several small bait fish into the tank. As you would expect, the shark quickly swam around the tank, attacked and ate the smaller fish. The marine biologist then inserted a strong piece of clear fiberglass into the tank creating two separate partitions. She then put the shark on one side of the fiberglass and a new set of bait fish on the other. She then put the bait fish in there more quickly this time, and again, the shark quickly attacked. This time, however, the shark slammed into the fiberglass divider and bounced off. Undeterred, the shark kept repeating this behavior every few minutes to no avail. Meanwhile, the bait fish swam around unharmed in the second partition. Eventually, oh, I'd say about an hour into the experiment, the shark gave up. This experiment was repeated several dozen times over the next few weeks. Each time, the shark got less aggressive and made fewer attempts to attack the bait fish until eventually the shark got tired of hitting the fiberglass divider and simply stopped attacking altogether. The marine biologist then removed the fiberglass divider, but the shark didn't attack. The shark was trained to believe a barrier existed between it and the bait fish. So the bait fish swam wherever they wished, free from harm. The moral to this story is just this. Many of us, after experiencing setbacks and failures, emotionally give up and we stop trying. Like the shark in the story, we believe that because we were unsuccessful in the past, we will always be unsuccessful. In other words, we continue to see a barrier in our heads even though no real barrier exists between where we are and where we want to go. Isn't it time that you lower that barrier, whatever it is which is holding you back? It may be a spouse, it may be a friend, or like the writer said, it could just all be in your mind. But what I'm here to encourage you to do tonight is don't stop trying. Don't stop trying. Don't be like the shark and just submit. Keep trying. Now, as before, I simply ask, Is it yours? Or will you give it away? Thank you for joining me again. And I'll see you again soon.
Bye. Thank you for joining me once again for our third installment of our four stories. This one is entitled, The Weight of the Glass. Once upon a time, a psychology professor walked around on a stage while teaching stress management principles to an auditorium filled with students. As she raised a glass of water, everyone expected they'd be asked the typical question, glass half empty or glass half full. Instead, with the smile on her face, the professor asked, how heavy is this glass of water I'm holding? How heavy is this glass of water I'm holding? Students shouted out answers ranging from eight ounces to a couple of pounds. She replied, from my perspective, the absolute weight of this glass doesn't matter. It all depends on how long I hold it. If I hold it for a minute or two, it's fairly light. If I hold it for an hour straight, its weight might make my arm ache a little. If I hold it for a day straight, my arm will likely cramp and feel completely numb and paralyzed, forcing me to drop the glass to the floor. In each case, the weight of the glass doesn't change, but the longer I hold it, the heavier it feels to me. As the class shook their heads in agreement, she continued, your stresses and worries in life are very much like this glass of water. Think about them for a while and nothing happens. Think about them a bit longer and you begin to ache just a little. Think about them a bit longer and you begin to ache a little more. Think about them all day long and you will feel completely numb and paralyzed. Incapable of doing anything else until you drop them. I like that. She says, think about them all day long and you feel completely numb and paralyzed, incapable of doing anything else until you drop them. So now, the simple moral to this story. It's important to remember to let go of your stresses and worries. No matter what happens during the day, as early in the evening as you can, put all your burdens down. Let me read that to you just one more time. This is, this is a great moral. You, I, I, I want to make certain that you grasp this. It's important to remember to let go of your stresses and worries, no matter what happens during the day, as early in the evening as you can. Put all your burdens down. Don't carry them through the night into the next day with you. If you still feel weight of yesterday's stress, it's a strong sign that it's time to put the glass down. Oh, I like that one. It says, 
if you still feel the weight of yesterday's stress. It's a strong sign that it's time to put the glass down. Now, don't take a rocket scientist to understand that. It's a strong sign that it's time to put the glass down. Are you still carrying water from a day ago, a week ago, maybe even longer? years ago. Is there some old tainted water in your glass? Will you own this one? Or will you give it away? Thank you for joining me again this evening. Stay tuned. Be sure to join me again. You wouldn't want to miss number four. Bye. Good evening once again, and thank you for coming back to the final story of the sequence of four. It's an amusing story, but I know you'll be able to relate to it. It's entitled, The Group of Frogs. As a group of frogs were traveling through the woods, two of them fell into a deep pit. When the other frogs crowded around the pit and saw how deep it was, they told the two frogs that, ah, uh, there was no hope left for them. No hope at all. However, the two frogs decided to ignore that and the others were saying, and they proceeded to try and jump out of the pit. They just kept trying to jump and trying to jump out of the pit. Despite their efforts, the group of frogs at the top of the pit were still saying that, hey, they should just give up, that they would never make it out. Eventually, one of the frogs took heed to what the others were saying and he gave up, falling down to his death. The other frog continued to jump as hard as he could. Again, the crowd of frogs yelled at him, stop the pain and just die. He jumped even harder and finally made it out. When he got out, the frog said, didn't you hear us? Didn't you just hear us? The frog explained to them that he was deaf. He thought they were encouraging him the entire time. So he jumped harder and harder and harder. You know, it's amazing how a very simple story can actually depict our lives. But this one should give you encouragement. Because no matter what the situation, no matter who you're around, there will always be those doubting Thomases that say, you're not gonna make it. You should just quit. You can't do that. You're not smart enough to do that. <laughs> well, the deaf frog was smart enough to get out of the pit. Where the one that listened to the others that were supplying nothing but negative thoughts, he gave up, he fell, and he died. Everyone has an opinion. Everyone will always have something to say. But if it's been placed on your heart, truly placed on your heart, and it's something that you really want to try, it's something that, that you've strove for a portion of your life, 
Don't let anyone deter you. Be like the frog. Tune them out. Tune them out completely. And then he tells us, if we knock, the door will be opened. He also tells us that he knows the plans he has for us, plans to give us hope and a future. I believe that. And I believe that when I set my mind to it, I can do it. So when the naysayers start to yell and the crowd starts to jeer in your heart and in your mind start to cheer because the little frog came out the pit. And when I was a kid, they, they told me about this story about this choo-choo train and he always said, I I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And he got further and further up the mountain. And though the mountain got higher, he just looked higher and he just kept saying, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And he reached the top. So you've had four stories tonight. You've had the joy of, of the shark bait. Take that mental block out of your mind <laughs> and achieve. You had the potato, the egg, <laughs> and the coffee bean. I'll just simply ask, <laughs> which are you? Personally, I think there's moments in my life when I'm all three. <laughs> but... I've always been the little frog. I've always been the one that tried to get out the pit. But now, mind you, <laughs> some of the pits I dug myself. But I've always been the one to try to come out of that pit. So you might ask yourself, are you even still carrying that glass of water? Well, I hope through the four stories this evening that you've learned a little something about self-reflection. I hope that every time you pick up a glass of water or a bottle of water, you ask yourself, how much does it weigh? Until next time, this is Donald Cox of 11th Hour Ministries saying good night and bye.